get ready for DIY farmhouse decor inspired by the Kirkland's catalog. It's all the charm you'd expect from Kirkland's, but you can get the look for less at a price that anyone can afford. And as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hi guys, it's Aneka, and welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. So today is one of my favorite types of videos to do for you guys, and that is Kirkland's dupes. As you know, I love to browse through the calendar, just check out what's new, what's stylish, what things I think might fit into my home, but at that cost, I cannot afford it. I love to go and see if I can find the same look for a little bit less, and that's what I've done for you guys today, so I really hope you like it. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Everyone, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when my next video comes out. And when the video is over, head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite or just say hi. Also, don't forget to find me on all these social media platforms and let me see what you're working on. It really makes me excited when I see what you guys are crafting and creating. It's really inspirational and I love it. Okay guys, it's time to craft. Now this first DIY is this adorable farmhouse shutter that I saw on the Kirkland's catalog. I loved the homey feel of it, but I did not like this price tag. For $44.99, I figured I can make one myself. So I got this sign from Dollar Tree. This one has an elf and it says happy holidays, but if you got the scarecrow one for fall um, or Halloween, those are about the same size and you can use the same technique to make the farmhouse shutter. So I'm just going to remove the ribbon and also the happy holiday sign. I'll save that for later because I'm sure I can use it in another DIY. Now to make this, I'm going to need a pack of one gallon paint stirring sticks and two packs of the five gallon paint stirring sticks. Now these are great to use on wood projects because at only a dollar a pack or sometimes even free, they really help you get that look for less. So I'm gonna take my five gallon paint stirring sticks and I need two that I cut to nine and five eighths inch, two that I cut to nine and a half inches, three that I cut to eight and three eighths inch, and I use the one gallon paint stirring sticks, cut them to five and seven eighths inches, and I used about nine of those. Now guys, these are the measurements that I used on my sign. You are going to need to measure them yourself to get it exactly right, because I did notice that these signs have a little bit of variation in their height and width. So to make sure everything is going to come out nicely, just grab one paint stirring stick and measure it off yourself. And here's a little trick to help you cut it better. Once you know exactly where you need to cut, you can just use a little bit of painter's tape, wrap it around at one or two points, and this holds them all together and you can just use your hand saw and cut them off in one big bunch. Now this really saves time and you can even do this before you take it out of the package if you don't need to measure it beforehand like I ended up needing to. Now, as some of you know, I recently moved to a new house, and also, as some of you know, I am notorious for being a late night crafter. I could not, for the life of me, find my sandpaper, and I did not want to make a 2 a.m. run to Walmart to get any, so I just used an emery board to sand down all the edges of my paint stirring sticks so they'd be nice and smooth for the next steps. And now we're ready to paint our wood. I'm going to use this Waverly chalk paint in the color Hazelnut. I got this from Walmart, but I will leave a link down in the description box to some more chalk paint if you need some at home. I'm going to dilute this down to about half paint and half water. And this way I'm gonna make a sort of a stain and I'm gonna treat it just like a stain. I'm gonna go ahead and paint it onto my wood and then I'm gonna come back through with a paper towel and just wipe off any excess that's on there. You guys, this is a great, quick, and affordable way to stain your wood if you don't have any wood stain at home or if you want to use a color of stain that you do not have. Now, because I use chalk paint, this does give it more of a matte finish, which I really like for some of my farmhouse decor or some of my rustic decor. So it's not going to give you that sheen that some 
stains will give you but this is quick easy and affordable and you can do it in any color you'd like and to make this look just like the inspiration piece i'm going to come back through and do the same thing but with some white chalk paint this is going to give it a bit of a white washed look i'm just going to come through and paint some of my white chalk paint stain on there and then I'm going to wipe it off with a napkin afterwards. Now I love doing this because I can still see the wood grain all the way through all of these layers of diluted paint and it really does give you that nice wood finish and you won't even be able to believe that you did it with paint stirring sticks. So while I let those dry, I'm going to go ahead and paint my board. Now I only need about half of this painted, so I'm going to choose the half that does not have the staple marks. This is going to make it nice and smooth for me in my finished project. Now you can use chalk paint, acrylic paint, anything you want for this step, but I actually think it would be adorable to use actual chalkboard paint. That way you could erase a chalk saying that you placed on there and switch it out whenever you felt like it. Once everything is dry, I'm going to take my five gallon sticks that I cut to eight and five eighths inches, and I'm going to place one right on the bottom edge of my sign. Now I'm just using these other sticks to measure out and make sure that I have an equal amount of overhang on each side, because this is gonna give me a nice finished look in my final project. Once I have it placed in the right spot, I'm gonna go ahead and use some hot glue to hold it in place. Now, I'm using hot glue for my project for the sake of time. You could use a sturdier adhesive like E6000 or Gorilla Glue if you want that extra hold on your project. And once that's secured, I'm gonna do the same thing to the top of my sign. Now I'm ready to grab my one gallon paint stirring sticks that I cut to five and seven eighths inch and I'm going to use these as the slats on my shutter. So I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue and press these on one after another and I'm just making sure to try to line them up as evenly as I can with the sides of the sign. Now as I said before these signs are not exact and I did have some overhang on a few of them which I just sanded down to the best of my ability to get a nice clean look. After all of those are attached, I'm ready to put my last five gallon paint stirring stick cut to eight and five eighths inch onto my shutter right on top of those slats that I just put on there. Now, once again, I'm just trying to measure it and make sure that I have the right amount of overhang on each side to make it nice and even. Next, I'm going to turn my shutter upside down and I'm going to use my nine and a half inch pieces and try and slide them right in between the two overhanging pieces on top and middle of my shutter. Now, as I said, these signs are not all exactly the same and what worked on my first shutter was just a tiny bit too long for the second one that I made. So I just use my emery board or your sandpaper if you have it handy, and I just filed it down until it fits securely into the spot where I needed it to go. Then I took a few pieces of scrap wood that I cut off of my paint stirring sticks. I used a little bit of hot glue and I put them right where my two sticks connected. This is just to give a little extra security that it will be nice and stable and that all of my pieces will stay together nicely. 
I also used a little bead of hot glue right along the seam where my sticks connected to my sign and once again this is just for a little added security. Now I completed the same steps on the opposite side. And lastly, we're ready for our five gallon sticks that were cut to nine and five eighths inch. And we're going to go through the same process, sanding if needed to get them to fit securely in between the two overhanging sticks and giving a little added support to make sure our project stays looking nice for a long time to come. Now that my shutter is completed, I'm just gonna use a paintbrush to get any sawdust off. And I decided at the last moment to just use chalk on my frame. Of course, if you have a vinyl cutter, you can make a decal, you can use paint, whatever you want to create the saying that you want inside of your shutter. I absolutely love how this looks and I cannot believe that I made it for a fraction of the price of what it would have cost from Kirkland's. So I was walking through Walmart, just, you know, looking for this and that, probably absentmindedly putting things in my cart. And I saw that they had a Halloween display and I saw this little tray. Now this tray was only $3, which makes it a great price. And I already knew that I was holding in my mind a Kirkland's inspired DIY that I was looking for the perfect piece to complete. And this was it. So for only $3 and a little bit more for paint, I was able to make this look for less. I love the look of this Kirkland's wall plaque made to look like an enamel serving tray. And I wanted to try to make it, but for less than the price that they were asking, which is just frankly not in my budget at this time. But this $3 plastic tray from Walmart is perfect to do this Kirkland's inspired DIY. I'm gonna start out with this Waverly chalk paint in the color white, and I'm just going to paint it front, back, and on the sides. Another way you could go with this would be to spray paint it with a gloss white spray paint. That would really go a long way to give you that glossiness of the enamel look. While that was drying, I did a quick Google search for the phrase, bless the food before us. So many options popped up. You will have your pick of any type of font you would like. Then I just printed it out and I'm gonna do a pencil transfer to get this onto my tray. So I'm gonna color the back with a pencil, making sure to cover every space where there is some writing on the front of my page. Once that's done, I'm going to flip it over and tape it onto my tray. And then I'm gonna come along with a pin and I'm just gonna trace right on top of this font. Now everywhere that I press with the pin will push some of that graphite onto my white tray and I'll be able to use it as a sort of a stencil once I remove the paper. Now I can easily use a Sharpie paint pen to trace along my stencil and put this beautiful lettering onto my tray. I could never have done this with my regular handwriting, so I'm thankful for this nice budget-friendly way to get this look for less. Great. 
Now to get that black detailing with the chipped look around the edge, I tried using the paint pen, which did not work. I also tried using a regular paintbrush, which didn't give me quite the look I was going for. In the end, I just used a small sponge brush and this was perfect to go along the edge with some black chalk paint and just give it that little bit of detail. Now every now and then, I did roll a little bit of the paint on the inside just to get a chippy look like this has been aged and weathered. And I love the way this came out. Now this was a quick, easy DIY, but this makes a big impact in the space that you use to decorate with it. And I just couldn't be happier with how this came out. And don't worry, if you're like me and you make some mistakes trying to get that look for less that you are going for, just keep crafting. You can always just cover it up with white paint and try again. Now this final DIY is a super quick one that I did just to give a little bit more personality to my fall decor. I got this pumpkin from Dollar Tree and I just removed the stem because I liked the color that it was and I didn't want to get any paint on it. I'm just going to paint the entire pumpkin in white chalk paint and it did take me about three to four coats to cover up this reddish orange color. Now that my paint is dry, I'm going to use these rub-on decals that I got from Dollar Tree. They have so many options that you can use and just keep checking back every now and again because I noticed that they put new ones out all the time and I'm absolutely in love with these. I'm just going to cut out a portion that I think will fit nicely onto my pumpkin and I'm just going to use my nail and rub it right onto my pumpkin. Now this did take a little bit of finesse because the pumpkin is not flat so I had to hold it in one spot, rub it in another, make sure that my design did not move too much from where I originally placed it. But this was a really quick and easy way to get this beautiful drawing onto my pumpkin. Once I was ready, I just popped that stem right back into my pumpkin and I kept adding more and more designs onto it. I was having so much fun. I love how this came out. This was so easy and such a great way to get a nice personalized look to any project this fall. I just love how all three of those DIYs came out. Now, if farmhouse is your style, these will fit right in and you'll love the way they look in your house and you'll love the way your pocketbook feels after not having spent all that money to get this look for less. If I had to choose though, I think that little pumpkin would be my favorite. It was so quick and I can make a ton more in just a few minutes if I want to and really get that feeling of fall with a personalized touch. Head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. So for today's treat, I have some of the cutest, most adorable, and quickest treats you'll ever want to see. Now, as you know, I am a pumpkin spice lover. I mean, as soon as September hits, I'm like, where's the pumpkin spice? So it was a no-brainer for me to use these pumpkin spice pretzels, but you could use regular pretzels, whatever you'd like to make these adorable, tasty, super snackable little pumpkins. So. It's time to eat. So for these quick and easy pumpkins, I went ahead and used some already dipped pumpkin spice pretzels that I got from Target. Of course, you can dip your own pretzels in chocolate. You can use regular chocolate pumpkins, anything you want for this project. Now I'm using white chocolate because this is what I had on hand and I'm just gonna put a little bit of green food coloring into it. If you have green candy melts, you could use those as well. You 
you can place your melted chocolate into a piping bag or you can use a Ziploc bag as I'm doing here. Put your chocolate into the bag and just snip off the tip just a little bit, enough to have just the tiniest bit of chocolate come through the bag. And now I'm just going to pipe little stems onto my pumpkin, making sure to connect a fair amount of chocolate onto the pumpkin and also a fair amount contacting the wax paper or the parchment paper that I've used. I'm going to pop these in the refrigerator until the chocolate hardens and that's it. Make sure you take some for yourself before you put these out because they are going to disappear before you know it. I hope you enjoyed the DIYs I had for you today. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and head down to the comments and let me know which DIY was your favorite. And I'll see you next time when we repeat it all again.